this video, I'm going to show you how to make these cute clay frames plus tiny art to go inside. These are so simple to make and I just love any art that you can really see the hand of the artist in the final product. So I'm obsessed with the look of these handmade frames and I'm going to show you just how to make them. To get started, you'll need an air dry clay. I am actually using Model Magic, which I think is typically used for kids craft projects, but I really love this stuff. The texture is almost like foam, so the shapes that you make with it stay really soft and organic. It's also super lightweight, so it's really easy to hang on the wall or use as a decoration. Now, this isn't the best clay to use if you want to make something that's really detailed and precise, so feel free to choose an air dry clay that suits you best. So I'm starting with a small amount of clay and pressing it together into a sphere, kind of conditioning it in my hands. I have about a golf ball sized amount, but feel free to use as much or as little as you want. Then I will take this and start shaping it into my frame. For this first one, I'm making a rectangle. Once I have that basic shape, I'm just using my finger to press an indentation inside the frame. The beauty of these is that they don't need to be perfect, so don't worry about being really precise with this. Just use your fingers to smooth out the edges the best you can. You should have something that looks kind of like this. Now you can leave the frame as is or decorate it a little bit more by adding some beads. Just press the beads into the clay and you'll let it dry just like this. You can experiment with making other shapes for your frame. I'm going to make one that's oval shaped following the same process as before, rolling my clay into a ball and then pressing that into a flat oval shape, then using my finger again to press an indentation inside the frame and smoothing out the edges. Finally, I'm going to add beads to this one as well. I think these are called bugle beads. They are tiny and kind of finicky to press into the clay, but the end result is really pretty. So you'll need to let this clay dry for several days. The longer the better. I left mine for about a week. And make sure you flip them every so often so both sides dry evenly. Once the clay is dry, it will still be slightly bendable, but it should be mostly hardened. Take out the beads to get the frame ready to paint. I'm using acrylic paint and mixing these three colors to get a nice shade of pink. I like to mix my paint in these little plastic food containers because it's easy to save what's left over and use it again later. I typically paint one side at a time let it dry, and then flip it over and paint the other side. You can also speed up this process a little bit by using a heat gun to dry the paint if you have one. I'm doing the same thing to this other frame, taking out the beads and then giving it a coat of paint. And for this one, I mixed a kind of cream color just with white and a little bit of yellow. Feel free to leave the frames like this if you'd like, but I love to add glitter on top. You can use glitter glue or loose glitter. I'm going to do both. I'm starting out with a layer of glitter glue to cover the entire frame, and I just brush it on with a paintbrush and then leave it to dry. When you're finished, it looks something like this. It looks great as is, but I want to add one more thing. I found this trio of chunky glitter at Target, and I especially love this one with tiny silver stars, so I'm going to add this to the frame as well. I'm using glitter glue as a base to adhere the stars to the frame since it's already covered in glitter anyways, and I let that dry completely before I move on to varnish. To seal the frame, I'm using a varnish called Triple Thick. I really love this because it's water-based and it's safer to use than resin, but it still dries in a nice glossy coat to protect the frame and make it a little bit more durable. I brush it on in a fairly thick coat all over the frame. Make sure you use a paintbrush to really get in all the nooks and crannies. I typically do one side at a time, letting it dry completely for at least 24 hours before I flip it over to varnish the other side. Once the frames are dry, they are almost done. Now it's just time to put the beads back in. I am using E6000 glue and a toothpick to stick them back into place. E6000 is a super strong glue that dries clear, so it works really well for this.
Finally, the frames are done and we can work on the art to go inside. I'm using watercolor paper, but feel free to use any art paper of your choice. I would just recommend using something nice and sturdy that will hold up well in the frame. Obviously, these frames are not perfect shapes, so we'll need to custom fit the paper to each one. You can do this by taking a lightweight piece of paper, I'm using tracing paper here, and press it into the frame to get a general idea of the shape, and use a pencil to lightly trace around the shape, but don't worry about being super precise because we'll fine tune it later. Cut that out as best you can and you should have a rough idea of what the inside of the frame looks like. Then trace this template onto the watercolor paper and cut this out. Lay it in the frame and see what needs to be adjusted. I make tiny cuts until I have a perfect fit. Then erase any pencil lines and you're good to go. Repeat this process to cut out a piece of paper for each frame. Now, time to figure out what tiny illustration to make for each frame. I'm going through my sketchbook to get some ideas. I love to work this way when I'm beginning a new art project. I always like to go through my sketchbook to get inspired because there's usually some old sketch or something that I can pull ideas from. I did a few rough sketches to start figuring out what I want to put in the frames. Some of the supplies I'll be using, I picked out a few colored pencils. This Indian ink from Winsor & Newton is great. I love painting with this. I also love this Liquitex ink. It's acrylic, so it goes on opaque. I have a random acrylic craft paint. It's not the best quality, but I love the color and I also love to find inexpensive art supplies. I have some paint brushes. These are the Princeton Velvet Touch, which I really enjoy using. And finally, my little watercolor palette that I have put together myself. Let me know if you would like an in-depth video about this in the future. It's not a pre-made set. A lot of these colors I actually mixed myself and I can show you just how I made it. Here's the first little artwork that we are going to make. I will walk you through each step. I'm going to start with some watercolor. I really love working with watercolor and colored pencils and layering them, so I'm gonna show you how I do that. I'm first painting a flower with a pink shade of paint. I like to do this all freehand, but of course you can sketch out your design first if you'd like. Once that's dry, I'm mixing a green shade to add the stem and leaves. You should have something that looks kind of like this. Next, I'm mixing a darker pinkish red color right on my palette, and I'm using this color to add a checkered background to my drawing. Call me crazy, but I find it really meditative to paint this freehanded, even though I know it would be a lot quicker to sketch it in pencil first and then paint, but you'll hear me say this a lot. I love imperfect art. I like to see the hand of the artist, and I just don't usually have the patience for doing a sketch first. Once the paint is dry, you can add colored pencil on top. I am very lightly adding some different colors to the flower petals just to make them a little bit more interesting. I'm also adding some darker shades around the edges to give some dimension. I'm using a lighter colored pencil to draw on top and kind of start blending everything together. And I just go back and forth with different colors, layering until I like how it looks. Another handy tool is this colorless blender from Prismacolor. This also works great to blend everything together and just soften those pencil lines. Finally, I'm using a green to add some detail to the stem and leaves. Now I'm taking my craft paint, which is a really nice neutral cream color, and I'm using this to paint the background. It can be a bit tedious to paint around the flower design, but once again, I kind of enjoy this tedious work. I like to take my time to fill in all those small spaces. And finally, this little artwork is finished. Next, we're painting this little rose design. Once again, I am going to start with a base of watercolor for the basic shapes. First, painting kind of a blobby circle for the rose. We don't need to be too perfect here. And then using green to draw the stem and the leaves. 
let that dry and then you can use colored pencils again to add a little bit of a color gradient to the flower i'm not being too specific with my placement i'm just kind of blending some different colors together to make it look a little bit more interesting and i am going to use a light colored pencil to go over everything and blend it all together you should have something that looks kind of like this then I'm taking a dark red pencil and sharpening it so it has a really nice point to add some line work. To carve in the flower petals, add the center of the rose first and then just start surrounding it with the petal shapes, working with that blob shape that you painted. Finally, using a green pencil to add the detail to the stem and the leaves. Next, I want to add a black background and I'm going to use my ink for this. So I'll show you how I personally like to work with this ink. I just grabbed a clean paint palette and I'm using my brush to pick up the ink and put it on my palette. Just a small amount, we don't need too much. Then I'm taking my water and slowly adding it to the ink to thin it out just a little bit until I get a slightly runnier consistency. The water also makes the ink less opaque, so the more you add, the more transparent it will become. I don't want a solid black background. I like some variation in the tone, so that's why I'm adding water. You'll see as I'm painting the background what I mean by this, how it kind of ends up looking more like watercolor, which I really like. When that's dry, I'm going to use my white acrylic ink to add the final details. I will not be adding water to this ink because I do want it to be opaque so that it goes on top of the black. I'm using a very small paintbrush to add a border and some lines behind my rows. And here is the final result. On to the next frame, which is another simple flower design. Can you tell that I like painting flowers? So for this, I'm going to start with a black border using my ink again. The great thing about this ink is you can rehydrate it if it dries on your palette and keep using it. So I just added a little bit of water and then drew this border. Next, I wanted to try using this craft paint to add the fine details on top of the ink, and it actually worked out pretty well. I just used a tiny paintbrush to draw a line and then write a short phrase. I really like incorporating text into my work, so I wanted to do that with this illustration. Then I'm going to use a light blue color to paint the flowers, and it's pretty simple to do this. I start by painting five petal shapes close together, but not touching. Then add a dot for the center, draw a stem, and another simple flower shape crossing over, and finish with a few leaves. I turn the illustration upside down and paint another flower in the same way. Next, I'm bringing out this craft paint once again to fill in the background. Here is the finished artwork. Finally, the last illustration is a super simple one with text as the main focus. To start, I'm taking that same blue color that I've been using and I'm going to paint a bow. Starting with the center of the bow and then adding the loops off to the side. Then I'm dragging my brush down to create the ribbon strands. Once again, I'm going to paint the background with this acrylic craft paint. I just prefer this color over a plain white background, which is why I'm doing it for all of these drawings. And finally, I'm going to use a pen to write a little phrase just to switch it up from the rest of the illustrations. And that's it for this one. And now we have all of the art finished for the frames. Also, just a side note, these two frames were actually the very first ones that I made that inspired this video, so I wanted to group them with all of these new ones that we just made. Now we have to glue the artwork into the frames. I am using E6000 glue for this, and I'm just smearing it onto the back of the paper and then gluing it directly into the frame. I'm going to leave the artwork as is, but if you want to varnish to protect the art or make it glossy, feel free to do that. I would just recommend using a varnish that is specific to the medium you used. I would not use the triple thick that we put on the frames because it is water-based, so it will make your watercolors run and ruin the art. 
Now what to do with the frames. You could add a magnet to the back and make a cute little decoration to hang on your fridge. Just use E6000 to attach the magnet. You could also use washi tape. This is actually how I hang mine on the wall. Washi tape works great because it doesn't damage the frame or your wall and the frames are lightweight enough that it works perfectly. And one more idea, you could attach a string to the back and hang it up that way. I love the idea of making a bunch of these art frames and creating a little gallery of all of your tiny art. These are just so fun to make and I feel like they turn out cute no matter what you do with them. Now, if you would like to see more behind the scenes of my personal art projects or just the things that I'm working on, check out my Instagram or my TikTok. I have been posting a lot recently. I am really excited to be back. I have so many more art tutorials in the works for you. So I hope you enjoyed this one and let me know if you give it a try.